John Williams and Bryony Lawrence of Webplay UK are at Newton Farm School, South Harrow, Middlesex, to run a one-day drama workshop. The aims of today are really to give teachers enough tools so that they can structure their own classroom drama session and feel confident in facilitating improvised classroom drama um, and also seeing drama um, as the potential for drama as a cross-curricular tool. We're going to be looking very specifically on structuring a lesson um, because structure is really key to, uh, to, to the learning experience in drama. The structure that we use in, uh, in teaching drama is uh, that we always begin with an agreement and that's a set of rules that the, um, that the children and the, the teacher agree upon that, uh, that will always guide, guide their work and guide their, their behaviour. The three C's are what we call our agreement and they're up here on the board over here. We've got communication, cooperation, we've got concentration and I think you'll find that if ever there's a breakdown in your class, you come to the, back to the three C's and it will be one of those three things that they weren't doing. Then we warm up and uh, warm ups are important in terms of drama because it will get the mind ready, get the body ready and just uh, to differentiate between the regular classroom activity that they may have been doing before drama and, and the drama itself. And it differentiates it between play and a learning experience as well. You have got 10 seconds to get into groups of people wearing trainers and people wearing shoes. There are different kinds of warm up you can do, a vocal warm up concentration warm-up, something that focuses on teamwork, or maybe something that really gets them physically warmed up. The first time you do this with a class, it might take them a while, it gets them talking to one another, they have to make decisions. Bryony hands out some photographs to act as a stimulus from which they can share information and knowledge to help create a focus for their subject. It's the geography scheme of work for Key Stage, uh, key stage 2 and it's, it's basically looking at a, 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 rural, a rural village in, in India. So if we just spend a couple of minutes, I'm just going to put these out in the middle of the group. And feel free just to come and, and have a look, turn them over, talk about them. Something happening here. What do you think is happening? Having established a focus, they go on to develop their ideas. A teacher would would create drama using uh, different little structures, like a still image, for example, from which to build into something bigger. But it's, it, the development is, is is creating small little nuggets of drama that will turn into something bigger. When we uh, work on the development section, the things that we look at in the workshop um, are, we, we begin with um, a visualisation. We'll talk through a, an imaginative journey from one place to another, in, in this case. And the importance of that is really to get them to think creatively about the topic that is being looked at. What I'll do is I'll paint a picture. I want you to try to visualise everything that I paint. And then at various points, I will tap you on the shoulder. I will ask a question. I want you to vocalise what you can see, what you can hear, what you can smell. And the roofs come off the hall and we're up in the air and you stop, hover over a small village. And it's dawn. And just concentrating, you can see a light below you. It's the first person up in the village is lighting a fire. I can hear the crackling of the flames. Animal noises. Children talking. The next thing that we look at um, is a soundscape. So we, um, we ask all of the children to, to think about what things that they would hear um, in, in the situation that they are in. And again, we take suggestions from all of them. We think about what, how, how you might create those sounds with your voice, with your body, maybe using the floor around you. What sort of sounds do you think you might hear um, a sort of early morning in chamber curling? I thought it might be dogs barking off in the distance. It might be birds chirping in the trees Excellent. with the sun rising. Excellent so. suggestion. Pick an animal, and then after three, we're going to have a go at vocalising um, those animals. OK, three, two, one. Go. 
literacy, we've been looking at fairy tales. So everything we've done this morning, I could relate back to fairy tales. I could do the soundscape. I could think about the characters and the sounds they'd be making in their houses. We've been doing Snow White, so I was thinking that would be a good one because you've got the dwarf's house and you could imagine all the different sounds that the dwarfs are making. We also look at a uh, bodyscaping. And this, similar to Soundscape, creates um, a, a visual picture of, of the place that we're creating, of the setting that we're using. Um, and we don't use any props, don't use any objects, we just use the, the children's bodies. And we're trying to get them to think creatively about how they can create things using just their, just their bodies. Brilliant. OK, so we have our backdrop of trees. We've got a door, if the door comes out a little bit. So we have a house. I quite like you to be the smoke. It's like that, just billowing up like that. Just billowing up, excellent, excellent. We can open the gate and let the cows out. So what I'd like to do now is put the sound and the movement uh, and the scene together. Yeah, let's go for it, okay. It's very important that the children do perform at least part of the work that they've done since that is what they see as, as the purpose. So that's the motivation that drives everything else. Here you go. This is your play outline. Right, shall I read it out? Shall I read it out to us? OK, option one. Um, beginning. It's morning time, the children go about their chores and begin their journey to school. Right. The middle, in the middle of the forest, the jeep breaks down. Right. And what we need to do is we need to find out, find an end, a solution to the problem. Uh, and our focus, what we should have, what we should show that we've learnt about is daily life and agriculture. They have to come up with three still images depicting key elements of the story. I'm going to be doing the other part. I'll be making the stories. I'm ready. Oh, where's our audience? Where's our audience? That way. Uh, oh, audience. Have we got enough Remember. levels? Have we got enough levels? It's frozen. Well, we've got someone beaning down. We've got someone right, standing. Okay. We've got someone sitting. Oh, we've got enough levels. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Okay. No, on. When the children are, have actually performed their, their piece of work, it's, uh, there, there are lots of ways that the teachers can draw out more from the drama. Thought tracking is a fantastic way of doing that. You can tap a child on the shoulder and ask them what that character is thinking. OK, Freeze, are you saying anything as you're moving? So have a think about what you well, might be saying. Kind of grunting, really. Yeah, OK. <laughs> I want to hear that. OK, Freeze. ready? One, two, three, go! <laughs> <laughs> And freeze. What are you thinking? I'm tired. Okay, what are you thinking? I want to get out of here. Once they perform the drama, it's very important that you evaluate what the children have done um, so, those, uh, so that they uh, know what they want to achieve next time and what they've learnt so it differentiates the session from being just some playing, having fun, to actually being about work and learning. So what do you think that uh, we, we've been learning about today? We used our many different skills in a very purposeful way to generate a picture, if you like. We can give slightly more information, gather more information about this village. Uh, Monsoon was one of them, but there are other characteristics like having the carts, what kind of transport they normally have if the jib broke down, uh, what do other parents do or other people in the community help when that happens to the children. Another really key reason why we evaluate is that it's a calming thing to do at the end of what has usually been a physical and energetic and excitable session. So always leave time for evaluation at the end. I think that drama brings the lesson to life. If you're doing history, if you're doing geography, if you're doing literacy, it can just wake it up almost.